Today we're going to dive into one of the most disruptive supply chain compromises we have seen in 2025. It is the self-replicating worm inside the NPM registry. This attack spread across more than 180 packages, maintained by multiple authors, and its end goal was credential theft. We're not just going to talk headlines now. We break down the technical mechanics of this worm, the root causes that made it possible, and the defensive strategies you can implement to prevent similar compromises in your environment. All right, so NPM is the world's largest software registry. It is powering Node, GS applications across enterprises, cloud infrastructure, and CI-CD pipelines. A single NPM package can be downloaded millions of times per week and modern applications often import hundreds of dependencies. This scale makes NPM a high value target. In this incident, attackers did not just publish a malicious package. They created a worm. The malware spread automatically using stolen credentials from one maintainer to compromise the next, creating a cascading infection across the ecosystem. The initial infiltration, attackers compromise an NPM maintainer's account. Possible methods they used including phishing, weak multi-factor protections, or leak tokens. With published rights, they slip malicious code into legitimate packages. Now, after the initial infiltration, they started abuse of lifecycle scripts. NPM automatically executes pre-install, post-install, and prepare scripts. Given that, the worm inserted obfuscated JavaScript into these hooks. Whenever a developer installed the package, the script would silently execute. And then we come to credential harvesting. The script collected secrets, environment variables. Uh, we also have .npmrc files, environment files, even GitHub tokens. These credentials were exfiltrated to attacker control servers, or as we call them, command and control servers. And the last step, as with every worm, it is the self-replication. Stolen NPM tokens allowed the worm to modify other packages maintained by the same victim. This led to new infected versions being pushed to the registry, which escalated the infection to downstream projects. This combination of execution plus exfiltration plus propagation is what made the incident so dangerous. Now, let me discuss with you the technical root causes. Okay, from my perspective, but after a bit of research, I found that first, weak credential hygiene might be the first problem or the first thing to blame. Developers, as I saw, they often rely on long-lived NPM tokens with full privileges. Few of, the, few of them use scoped or short-lived tokens. Uh, next, it is insecure defaults in NPM. Lifecycle scripts run automatically with no sandbox, as we know. Developers rarely audit scripts buried in transitive dependencies. And of course, we have limited registry guardrails. NPM's malware detection is heuristic-based and it's actually slow. There is no enforced signing or reproducible builds. And of course, dependency overload is another thing to blame here. Applications often bring in 500 to 1000 dependencies. A single infected package can, you know, cascade into thousands of downstream projects. In short, we had powerful execution hooks, weak identity protections, and an ecosystem built on blind trust. These are the perfect conditions for a worm to thrive. Let's remember that. MFA is important. Enforce MFA for or multi-factor authentication for NPM accounts, hardware keys, or whenever possible. Next, of course, use scope tokens with minimal privileges and rotate them regularly. Try to do that regularly. Run NPM and install with uh, dash dash ignore dash scripts, of course, unless scripts are explicitly required. Don't forget to audit dependencies with NPM audit. Maybe you can also use OWASP dependency check and treat environment variables, git credentials files as highly sensitive assets. Now, if you are an organization and I believe you use NPM a lot, the first thing you want to do here is sandbox build environments with egress restricted to trusted registries. Also, you have to automate software build of materials, or as we call it the SBOM, generation to track transitive dependencies. As to file integrity, implement integrity monitoring to detect suspicious lifecycle script edits. And regarding storage, try to centralize secret storage. For example, Vault, AWS Secret Manager, instead of passing via environment variables. Now my last message to NPM registry and ecosystem. 
please require mandatory two-factor authentication for popular package maintainers. You may also want to consider short-lived scope tokens as the default. You may also try to deploy automated checks for lifecycle scripts, making it um, some kind of outbound HTTP requests, and maybe you may consider moving toward package signing and reproducible builds to validate provenance.